I'm Jenna Hartzell, the Executive Director of Arts Obispo. Our mission is to advance the visual, literary, and performing arts throughout San Luis Obispo County. We've been providing programs that give artists opportunities, um, provide arts and education, and access to the arts to the community for over 30 years. Um, this program will feature four artists that are part of our Open Studios Art Tour program that happens every October. This will be our 16th year. The Open Studios Art Tour is an event where visitors can tour the beautiful studios throughout San Luis Obispo County and experience from the artist how and why they create their art and get an idea and an understanding about what it takes to create an art piece from concept to completion. First up, we have Patricia Griffin of Patricia Griffin Studio. Patricia is a ceramic artist whose unique studio is located on Main Street in Cambria in the old historic schoolhouse. Hi, I'm Patricia Griffin. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do my ceramics. It's uh, my working studio as well as my showroom and my gallery. Come on in. I started doing pottery 17 years ago just for fun. It was going to be something that I could do to um, do some creative decision making that was not tied to the needs of clients. And it ended up to just becoming a passion and kept going. I, I took more and more class and studying from people whose work I really admired. And then seven years ago, when we moved to Cambria, I opened up my own studio space and a showroom space and started working with other galleries. So it really grew. It grew from a little seed of just wanting to play 17 years ago. This is a good example of my work. Get it off here. I do a lot of imagery on my ceramic pieces with this kind of scraffito technique that I lay down color and then I scratch away. And uh, I'll show in a minute how we do that. I have this area as a showroom where people can look at examples of the work. And then most of the, the schoolhouse is devoted to my studio. And I sell from here as well as several galleries in California. As you can see, this is a one-room schoolhouse. It was built over 100 years ago, so I feel very privileged to be able to work from this space. It's got these large open windows and just a lot of really nice light to work with. And then back here is my studio space. And through the years, I've been here for, I think I'm in my fifth year here now. And the studio space is getting larger and larger as I take on more projects and am represented by more galleries. So right now. Now, I've, what I've got going is some glazing. Um, I'm also going to be throwing and showing how I do my technique. I've got uh, different stations for different things. On the raised elevation up, up at the top, I have two wheels. And I throw um, from the pottery wheel, mostly standing up like this. It's kind of a sit-stand stool that I use. And that's uh, after, I've been doing this now for 17 years, and um, it's just a much healthier way to work with the wheel when you can stand up, or partially stand up. I'm actually perched on this stool. When we have events like open studios, we will um, sometimes give people a chance to try throwing and I help them throw a piece, and then we actually finish it all the way through and glaze it for them and send it to them. So that's, an, that's really fun for visitors. Can't do it all the time, but on special events I do it. So what I'm doing now is just making sure the piece is centered on the wheel head, and then I start creating a, the hole in the middle And then the wall of the piece, this is just going to be a body for a mug. And then I compress the bottom. And then I start to bring up the side. 
I like to use this sponge to um, lay against the exterior of the piece and it's just helped me with my hands. This clay that I work with is a combination of stoneware and of B-mix. So it's very smooth, which is so nice when you're throwing it. It has very little sand or grog in it. And so later, when I'm doing my etching, I don't kick up the little bits of sand that a lot of people that have taken community classes or college or high school, this, this, the clay tends to be uh, groggier than this, and this is just very smooth and nice to work with. Now what I'm going to do is just smooth out the, oh, there it is. And in some states that people actually dig for their own clay, but I don't do that here. And I also, I work, so I work with commercial clay, and I also work with uh, commercial glazes. So I really want to know everything that's going in and on my pot. All my pieces I are uh, glazed with lead-free, non-toxic commercial glazes. So now I'm cutting off some of the bottom. And this will be trimmed further after the piece stiffens up a little bit. You know, there's so many ways to work with clay, um, from earthenware, and thick, sandy clays to porcelain, which is the smoothest. And um, what I, I try to do with this clay body is I'm getting the best of both worlds by having both the stoneware and the porcelain in one clay body. And it's already mixed for me at Laguna where I get it. So that is going to just sit over here to stiffen up. And I've got some that I threw yesterday, and I'll, I'll show you how I trim them. What I'm doing now is just taking them off the bases that they were thrown on. And I'll be pulling handles for them, and then trimming the bottom. And later on, when the handles have stiffened up, I'll add those to the mug. So this part right here is what we're talking about. So I still have to trim the bottom and then apply the handle to the mugs. What I'm going to do now is make the um, stubs for the handles. I'm just going to do one of them for our deck bar to show you. I form it and then um, let it stiffen up. And that usually it's a couple hours to let it, it's because you want it to take on the, um, that kind of arch that is in the handle of a mug. I like it to have kind of a little, like an indentation to it. So you can see how that looks like, it will look like a handle when it's set up. And we let that dry. And then I'll come back later and add it to the mug. This is also the station where I throw larger pieces. So that's why the mirror is here, so I can watch without having to cock my head over all the time, although I still find that I do that. I always decorate my foot so there's a little surprise for the buyer or the viewer when they look at it. So then that'll set up for about a week, and uh, during that process I'll start working on the decoration. These will set up for at least a week, and um, I have them dry under plastic. So it really depends on how humid it is in the air. Um, but usually it's at least a week, and then I will bis fire them, and I bis fire them really slowly over about 13 hours. And uh, after that is done, they get glaze fired. And I forgot the most important part, which is actually doing the decoration on the piece. It's, it's done when the clay is cheese hard. It's the consistency of, think of like getting a block of cheese out of the refrigerator. Like at this stage right now, I could start decorating. And I don't want to wait until it's completely dry because then it's too sandy. It's too, um, it'll kick up dust and be scratching more than incising into the piece. And this over here is where I do the decorating. I start out by putting this black underglaze onto the piece, and then I scratch away. So everywhere where you see the, the white lines, it's actually the color of the clay underneath. 
So I just start etching these lines in. It's a little bit drier than I like. I spray it to keep it wet. I really like this feeling of movement on the pieces. So all my work has pattern and I use things like bees and leaves and these lines to create that kind of movement and have it go around and under the piece and of the elements. And most of the time in this, well, certainly in this current series, I'm working with black and white, but I also have started to use some orange and some other colors. And I tend to work with black and white for a while and then want to grab some color. <laughs> yeah, I started out by, I was running my business. I had an advertising and design company over in uh, Bakersfield here in the... California, and I uh, just started taking classes at the community college just for fun, you know, doing things that were creative that weren't tied to satisfying a client. And originally I started, I think, taking some drawing classes and then um, discovered the clay studio and began taking as many classes as I could, but I was still running my business, so I would go into the clay studio at the college and have all my clay clothes with me and change into those and then take, take the clay class and then at the end of that run back to the student's bathroom, change all my clothes and go running to a client meeting and I'd be there and look down and I'd have clay all over my hands or on my glasses or, you know, but I was trying to I was just really fascinated by it. And um, then eventually I got my own wheel and um, started working from my home studio, still just part time, you know, doing it when I could, and started taking classes uh, by people whose work I really admired. I went to North Carolina a couple times and took classes at a craft college called Aramont and Sierra Nevada College and Mendocino Art Center and um, got to learn new things from people. I'd seen their work in magazines, you know. So that just added fuel to the fire and then uh, seven years ago I really started devoting, um, I would say, full time to this and I still work with some of the design projects that I did back when I had my full service business, but it's much more limited now. And I got a full time studio um, seven years ago when we moved here. So as you can see, it's a little bit time consuming, but it's really, I, I just, it's fascinating to me and you can I like the idea of laying down a line and then responding to that line. So even though I have a general idea of where I'm going when I start, I don't have it specifically mapped out. I'll have the main elements in mind and then just be reacting to each line that I put down creates the next. I like to just brush off the little bits of etching that has come up. And I, again, I, I like to do this when it still has a little bit of moisture in it so it's not creating a, a dust in the air or anything. When this underglaze is covered with clear glaze, it can be um, food safe. And so on all my pieces that are meant to be used with food, I put a clear glaze over them. Actually, we'll even do that for this one too so that it can be used in areas where um, water can get to it and it won't be a problem. I started signing my pieces with my full name when um, I began to have collectors that are in other areas of the state and other areas of the country. I want them to be able to find me. 
used to be potters would just use a potter's mark, you know, and that became what they were known for in their region. And anymore, our customer base is really goes extends way beyond our communities. Okay. I'm going to set this one over here to dry for a while. And these are where I have the pieces that are in process. Like here's one down here I can pull out and show you. This one. So I laid down, all of this was black, and I started etching away. I'm going to put orange on this side right here. And um, then I'm going to do some other decoration on the other parts of the piece. This is the next group of pots that I'll be firing. These are all going to a gallery. I put on gloves so that I found through trial and error <laughs> that just the oils from my fingers would leave spots on the, on the bisware that the glaze would then sometimes not stick to. You can see the, um, where the wax is, and that's going to repel the glaze. Still, I, I try to, in every load, experiment with some other glazes. But this blue is just so wonderful, and people love it. And it's what I've uh, committed to the gallery that's going to be showing this series of work. Serving ware or coffee or tea mugs, the decoration is always on the outside for the, of the mugs. And um, I try not to do it where it's going to interfere with where your lips would touch the piece, like on a mug. So there's those kind of considerations when you're making functional pieces. And it takes a while to develop that, to think about how people will be interacting with the piece. You don't have to think about it quite so much on something like a vase, you know. So all my mugs are microwave and dishwasher safe. After I'm done with the glazing, then the pieces can immediately go into my kiln. And I will glaze for about seven hours. And it goes up to about 2,300 degrees and cools down for about a day. I have to wait for them to be completely cool. Um, and then I'll unload the kiln. And that's always a fun day. I always look forward to it. It's like Christmas. You know, you open up the kiln and there's usually some treasures and some things look a lot better than what you had hoped. And there's often a few things that get either little dents or chips and, you know, they don't work the same way that you had intended. So there's always a, a give and take to kiln opening day. This is the color blue that the, the finished glaze will be. This area right here is the decoration with some clear glaze over it. I hope everybody comes to Open Studios and that you come to Cambria. Not only, I should add, about Cambria is we've got a number of potters here. So if you're interested in ceramic art and you're involved in Open Studios, come to Cambria because we are, we're rich in potters in Cambria. The, the feeling of the decoration to be part of the piece so this is an underglaze that I put on, and then I start etching away. So it hasn't been fired yet at okay. all. Yeah! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.